Because it has recognized that God favored her from her very first moments of her life, the Church has traditionally honored Mary throughout its history. The understanding of Mary's place in Christian history is rooted first in the Gospel. From her free and joyful yes in response to the angel's message at the Annunciation, to her presence with the disciples at Pentecost, Mary's life is linked to the salvation of the world by Jesus Christ. To come closer to Christ, there is no better way than to turn to the person who, while here on earth, was closer to him than anyone. Mary, his mother, the perfect model of faith, hope, and love. In the face of many fears and uncertainties we may have in our lives today, Mary is an example of humble trust and steadfast faith. She shows us that God's interest in us is personal. This is our hope, and that hope will not be disappointed. To be like Mary, we simply have to follow her example, to trust totally in God, and to do what she did best, to love Jesus with all her heart. Let us reflect on these things as we begin in prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, in your mercy and justice you cast down the mighty and exalt the lowly. Your marvelous wisdom is shown above all in the Word made flesh and in his virgin mother. For he, your Son, who freely humbled himself even unto death on the cross, now sits at your right hand and is radiant with unending glory. The King of kings and Lord of lords, and she, the virgin, who wished to be called your servant, was singled out to be mother of the Redeemer. Give us the grace to follow the example of Mary in serving you, to do what love demands for the sake of our brothers and sisters, to deny ourselves and spend ourselves, so as to win our neighbors for you, to be lowly on earth, so as to be exalted in heaven, where you reward your faithful servants with a crown of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. said to Mary, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Mary set out in haste to a town of Judah, and greeted Elizabeth, her relative, who was also with child. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on all ages will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Why do Catholics worship Mary? This could not be further from the truth. The church honors Mary as the mother of Jesus. Worship is dedicated to God alone. By her very relationship as the mother of Jesus, Mary is queen because Jesus is king. Who is a king's mother? A queen, of course. 
And Mary is the greatest queen ever, for she is the mother of the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. The angel Gabriel declared this to be true in the Gospel of Luke. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David his father. And he shall reign in the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Not only is Mary the mother of the king, she is the most highly favored daughter of God the Father, and the spouse of God the Holy Spirit. She always obeyed God and was humble before him. Mary received the promised, never fading crown of glory, because her life so perfectly resembled that of her sons, and because she shared in all his sufferings. As a reward for her holiness and perfection of virtues, Jesus gave her dominion over the angels and the saints as their queen. Evil spirits fear Mary more than any other human because they never had any power over her, for she was conceived in her mother's womb without the blemish of original sin. Jesus could only enter this world through a spotless woman, one created as Adam and Eve were created, perfect in the eyes of God. If Jesus, the Son of God, loved and respected his mother Mary, shouldn't we? Mary is queen of the universe by the power of love. She is chosen by the Father and declared by the angel to have found favor with God. From Mary's heart, we hope to obtain the love God expects from us, for she is a teacher as well as a mother to us. Ponder for a moment all that she is asked to bear as the mother of God's only son. As the mother of Jesus, Mary was indeed full of grace, and we now honor her by crowning her Queen of the Universe and Queen of Peace. Let us pray. God our Father, we praise you and give you thanks for choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, and you wish for all ages to proclaim her blessed. We pray to you. Help us follow her as an example, that we might listen to your word and put it into practice. Because Mary learned to love us by loving her child Jesus, help us to serve you better by following her example in our love for Jesus. May we then be able to share the inheritance of eternal joy that you give us through your only Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>